All right, let's take a look at what's going on macro. Uh, so much to get through this week, and I'm not even talking about the Melbourne Cup, which is running tomorrow. All eyes will be locally, at least, on the central bank with the RBA uh, on its yield curve control. Then, of course, we've got the Bank of England this week and the US Fed with that tapering expected to be announced. Uh, let's get stuck into it. Pete McGuire joining us from XM in Sydney. Pete, a very good Monday morning to you. Goodness, are you strapped in and ready to go this week because there is so much to get through. Let's start locally with the uh, RBA. What do you think its options are at this point, just as far as uh, yield curve control is concerned? Well, good morning, Andrew. There certainly is a lot of data to get through. And yeah, if you look at it there, I've got a note you know, it's currently that uh, 0 0.010 in recent days. So that raises great concern for the local, uh, the RBA. And of course, with that three year, the inflation story uh, biting away at their ankles and how that moves forward from here. And as you can see in that chart, it's, uh, yeah, onward and upward. So that's really creating, I think, a fair bit of concern. And that's a concern that's going to be felt this week, as you mentioned, across the Bank of England, certainly what's happening as far as the states. And is it, are we in a transitionary stage as far as inflation or is it, has it galloped away? And now it's trying to, you know, you're trying to bring it back. But Pete, do you feel as though the market has got ahead of itself? Um, or are you thinking these inflationary issues are embedded at the moment? Because the bank is clearly looking at wages growth at this point, when, which we're not really seeing. Well, we're not, Andrew. I certainly, uh, everyone you talk to as far as all of the input costs, if you look at home construction, if you talk to plumbers, you talk to them, uh, you know, just local business people, the cost of doing business is far greater than what it was a year ago or two years ago. And, you know, think of uh, everything that you buy. So I think that when you're working through the framework as far as inflation, I think it's far a, a far greater story globally. And you can't add trillions of dollars as far as stimulus and not get a result. And that's what's happened with you know really negative interest rates over the last couple of years. So there's that's where we've got to play a, a very close hand. And the other hand, of course, is the stagflation story. Are we going to see strong growth this week? We really underwhelmed uh, as far as that US non-farm payrolls in September at 194,000. All the analysts are expecting 385,000 this Friday for October. And if it's anything short of that, then that really demonstrates the, I think the fragility of that US market. And you've also got that Chinese PMI data released today. So I'm mm. looking at that global situation. We shut here on Friday night. It was bang down 1.4% nearly on our Aussie market. I noticed you mentioned we've been bit up this morning. But when you think about what we experienced on that US dollar on Friday night, it was nearly up 1%, Andrew. So there really demonstrates the, uh, the size of the market and what's going on globally. Yeah, Pete, you mentioned China there, of course. That is of increasing concern. That weakness yep. looks as though it's persisting at this point. Absolutely. And I think that the, uh, again, fragility across their, the, the major part of their economy is construction and property. It accounts for about 30% of their domestic economy, as we know. And the evergreen story, they've been, well, everything that I'm reading is that the CEO has got to write a check from his, uh, his bank account and uh, and let's see what happens. But the, the storyline is, you know, that the asset is worth, you know, it's sold, it's down around about 90%, I believe. So how many other evergreen evergrands are there out there uh, across different sectors of their economy? And I think this is all going to play out over the next matter of months and what impact that has to both uh, globally and, of course, to uh, their own economy internally. OK, Pete, so you mentioned the Fed, of course, that uh, meeting coming up, but... Um... But actually, they'll miss out on that uh, non-farm payrolls number because that's dropping on Friday. However, yep. what are you expecting then? So, the, I mean, certainly the taper is expected to begin. What about any talk of uh, rate hikes? Well, I think so, Andrew. The, 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 the problem is how deep is and whether uh, uh, Fed Chair Powell stays with his uh, or he, he changes his, um, his statement as far as that transitionary inflation story. So I think you've just got to uh, really read into what he says and what the market anticipates from there. And then naturally, do we see uh, earlier than suggested, certainly taper and the possible rate hikes? And 
all of these have to play in. We're going to see that those that feeling coming across from the Bank of England this week also. And are they going to be first cap off the rank on a on a major market to really look at you know hiking rates? And then does the U.S. absorb some of that and say, yeah, we we need to do similar? But that stagflation story, Andrew, I think is one that's really going to again present itself over this uh, northern hemisphere winter. Yeah, you mentioned the BOE there, uh, Pete. Looks as though like it's a fifty fifty call as to whether it's uh, they're going to actually. Uh, lift rates there. Uh, what sort of action yeah. are you looking, particularly as far as the pound is concerned? Well, I think it's actually even more than a, even 50-50. I think it's probably about 60 or 65. So that pound at the moment, you're looking at around that 136.80 handle. Let's see what happens to the US dollar. That's what that's, I mean, it's, it's up the best part of nearly 1% uh, in the last trading session. So again, that's going to, I think, push pressure onto the pound. Uh, but if they're raising rates, then that's possibly going to be a good sign for the pound. So, uh, again, it's going to be a volatile week, Andrew. I think for every trader, strap yourself in because it's going to present many different moving parts that can change the market. And as we know, currency markets are open 24 hours a day, not like a 10 to 4 Australian equity market time frame. Yeah, it is going to be an exciting week indeed. So much to look at. Pete, thanks for joining us from XM. Thank you, Andrew.